What's up, what's up, people? It was the Rest of Boy TV, and it's your boy, the real Rest of Boy, coming to you with a damn other video. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with this damn weather, but can somebody tell me when this weather is going to be more warmer or more warm? God, I'm telling you, I'm so frustrated by this weather. But anyway, I'm here jamming to a little bit of LA. You know, the movie just came on Lifetime, LA, the Princess of R&B, and you know, I love me some LA. Anyway, enough of that Elia, Elia, you know she have done a lot of music that we've been love and fall in love with. I, we so miss you Elia, um, you know, and you know, R.I.P., you know, you know, all the, you know, the, the, the medicine that you did in the past can't, you know, measure to what you could have done right now if you were still alive. But anyway, enough of if Aaliyah was alive. Let me go ahead and get into this Lifetime movie. Aaliyah biopic, I think you want to say? Esque? Um, anyway, before I start off, I knew I need a damn drink because it was a lot of stuff going on this weekend. We're going to have some watermelon, watermelon um, juice. You know, everybody's making watermelon juice, um, juice now. Um, this is um, made by Minute Maid, Minute Maid Water Bell and Juice with um, Absolute Vodka, a splash of um, ginger beer, and I put some, I'm, I'm a plucker, let's just kick it up a notch. Let me show you you're drinking our cocktail while watching the video tonight. I have a full glass, I'm going to go in because I need a full glass because it's going to be a long video. Please remember to two thumbs up thumb the video, and after the video, please leave your comments what you thought about whatever I recapped and you know, give your opinion sound off. Also, happy birthday to everybody out there celebrating birthdays. It's still Scorpio season. It's my birthday season still. So, happy birthday to everybody out there celebrating birthdays still. Happy, happy birthday because I love my Scorpios and it's the best season ever, right? Anyway, um, a Leo movie came on this weekend on my Lifetime. If you have not yet watched it, bitch, you need to get a damn cable and stop trying to get it off YouTube. Hey. <coughs> so the movie came on tonight this weekend on Lifetime Network. You know, Lifetime been, you know, behind some of the other biopics such as I think Anna Nicole and um some other stuff that went on. You know, Lifetime has been known for doing a lot of movies for Television for women. I think they've changed their, their logo and slogan for you know to cater for a broader audience now because you know everybody's watching Lifetime on a Sunday. It was all about Lifetime. You know who kill who and you know who cheating on who and Lifetime is a good network, but I don't know about the Lifetime movie production s ish that went off for this Aaliyah Prince of R and B movie. Okay, so I'll watch it twice. Just to make sure I got it. Because I mean, you know, you watch a movie and you miss some parts, bits and pieces, and you watch one, watch one time and you watch another time, you're like, oh, I didn't see that part. So I watch it twice. Just to make sure I'm giving an accurate analogy or give my opinion about it real and direct. Okay. So the movie, I watched with my friend, but I was in DC. So shout out everybody out there in the DMV era. I saw y'all this weekend. Um, anyway, the earlier movie. Truly and honestly, I don't want to be too bad with the rating, but I'm gonna give it a C for overallness. Meaning that it was a, it was it was a good attempt. I'm not even giving it a, a C plus, a, a C like a basic C. As far as the parts of who played who in the show, the only thing I can say they captivated was the person who played Aaliyah. And I'm sure you've seen it out there. You've seen social media went into. Uh, raged over the the casting of individuals such as Timberland was not played properly. Missy Elliott was way off. The person who played Missy Elliott was not even nowhere comparable to what Missy Elliott looked like back then or looked like now. And then the play person who played Dame Dame Dash was also off. He was tall. I thought he was Drake's brother. You know the rapper Drake's. And then the guy who played um, R. Kelly was black, but he I mean. 
thank God he's black, but it was dark skin, but it was not giving me R. Kelly S. Like people out there are, you know, celebrity impersonators and all that stuff that do it for a living every day. Why could you not get these personal people out there who are like upcoming actress, upcoming actors who want to get a break in Hollywood and want to like, you know, I don't know, I don't think the casting was a hit, uh, sorry, it was a miss. The casting of these characters for this Aaliyah um, Lifetime biopic was a miss. Only person they nailed was that, what's that girl, what's her name again? Um, Alexandria Shepard, is, is that her name? She was the only one who was very close. I liked the fact that she was embodying Aaliyah. She gave me some of the Aaliyah looks, she was like that Aaliyah. I kind of, that's the only part I really liked. So I can give big props to the fact that this girl that uh, played Aaliyah looks somewhat like Aaliyah. She was not like way off, you know, and you can never get somebody that's going to that's gonna be looking like the person who's portraying somebody at all unless you give them like a full makeup and having like two hours of makeup trying to look like somebody else. She, this girl was looking like herself, but was embodying Aaliyah. As far as parts of the show that I did not like, majority of it, um, but... There was part of the show um, that from Aaliyah was doing her um, star search, um, you know, thingy, and then they jumped from that right to like her going all the way up. They didn't try to transition from the fact that she started doing star search, she didn't win, and then also she had a record deal with her uncle um, who was with a big record label that was also part of, I think, Jive Records and something. So um, it was too of a fast transition with some of the scenes. And then Aaliyah would start, you know, touring with her. I didn't even know Gladys Knight was actually her um, aunt-in-law. I mean that I think her uncle, that's, uh, is, I don't know if they're still married, but um, Aaliyah's um, uncle, I guess, married Gladys Knight. So they're related by marriage. Um, so that's um, Aaliyah start touring and being on, you know, some of the appearances with Gladys Knight. And, you know, Gladys Knight was big back then. So, you know, for somebody to be, like, opening for Gladys Knight, that was a big deal. So that's how Aaliyah kind of started being known and getting out there, which was good. I never knew that part. I never knew that Aaliyah was even religious Gladys Knight by marriage or whatever. So that was good. Um, also, I did not even know that Aaliyah was nominated for an Oscar because of the movie soundtrack that she did for some kind of Disney movie. I didn't even know that either. So that was enlightening to me. So I, that's some good parts of the movie. That was I was being educated right there. I didn't know that um, Aaliyah... Um, what does I don't know? So yeah, there's a lot of parts I didn't know. Most of the stuff I didn't know. Some of them really fully educational, but a lot of stuff in there I did not know. Um, so right through the movie, we see that she, you know, she got a record deal. She started working on her album. The album was blowing up the charts. What I did not like, I didn't like the fact that we didn't see her going out in a promotional tour, going out there to meet the fans, doing any concerts. You know, we know that she's gonna sing the song. Well, she can sing. We know that she gonna. They didn't get the rights for her to do the songs live or whatever, or play the the music in the background, or whatever you call it. But she can sing. So if she sings it in her own version, they can't block them from using that rights. But they can't block them from using the original music. So why did not get her to sing some of the songs from the new from the first album, which is I think, Angel Nothing But a Number. Why she sing none of the songs off of that? At going on tour, touring with this person, opening for this people. Why we didn't see none of that? That's what I was kind of pissed about. And then they jumped from that first album that did really well, that did, that's, well, I think, double platinum, to the second album was already, um, you know, in the works, you know, and trying to find out the new sound. She got married to R. Kelly at 15, then that whole little thing went off, you know, real, you know, fast. And all of a sudden now, she's working on her second album, and then... All of a sudden now, you know, she's working with, you know, different peoples, trying to, you know, rebrand re, re, re her and, you know, make her look more, you know, polished and stuff, trying to get into acting. We saw that, we saw the part of which, you know, she was getting movie roles now, such far, as far as, um, um, what's it, um, Jet Li, with the Jet Li movie, Romeo Must Die. So, some parts of the movie was okay. The transition, I think, wasn't really Good, I mean that it wasn't. I don't. I didn't like the movie was not marrying each other. You know, married is a unit. They was not crossing each other clearly. It was like confusing sometimes. And then all of a sudden, you know, she was now dating Dame Dash that she met at a, a industry party. You know, the girls go to parties many times, meet each other. They become friends from talking and chit chatting and whatever. You know how it is at these parties. So then she started dating Dame Dash. Um, you know, she started dating him. All of a sudden, they're getting serious now. She's going on um, out of country, which is the Bahamas, I think, to shoot the rock the boat, rock the boat, rock the boat. She's going, out to, going out of country to shoot the video. That's the last time we saw, well, that's the last time the movie 
showing anything interaction with Aaliyah and Dame Dash. She waved by from the limousine um, that she's going to miss him and she's going to come back home. Now, all of a sudden, that was the end of the movie. We saw Chris going up on the screen talking about, you know, obviously we know that, um, you know, she died with a plane crash, blah, blah, blah. She didn't survive. Yes, we know that. And maybe the only reason why I think they did not give a lot more of the plane crash scene was fearing for the fact that the family would be having to relive that moment for the mere fact that, you know, their daughter died. They don't want to see the reenactment of the plane crash, the whole, you know, scene with the police and, you know, come and tell your mom that your daughter died. I think maybe that was maybe out of respect for the family that they did not want to include that part in the part of them in the movie. So that's the only part I kind of think that was okay, even though I didn't like the, the, the what if I can't read? That part I put up on the TV screen for the last one minute of the movie and then it was just credits going up on the screen. I didn't like that part. Um, I don't know. The movie was so, so, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a lot of flaws with the movie, but I think the movie, I think the title should have been Aaliyah, The Prince of R&B, based on a, a novel or based on a, a book written by somebody else. So not to let it look like it's a real, full 100% information that y'all got from family members, friends, whatever. It was from somebody who wrote a book about Aaliyah and all that life journey about her that was put in a book that y'all took from a book and made it in a movie. So that's why I think that the, the title should have reflect the book title and made it look like we're, you know, we're getting information that was placed in a book, not information that was researched and this and that. Because I'm like, first of all, y'all know Missy Elliott and Timberland are big in the in music industry. Why could you not get somebody to replicate their image in the movie? That was a no-no. Dame Dash and, you know, the R. Kelly, and other people that was, you know, in the movie that didn't really look like themselves in real life was okay. But Miss Ella and Timberland should have at least, Timberland was heavier back then. Timberland has a little tummy. Miss Ella was giving you super duper duper, you know, heavy, overweight. Not not being bashing Miss Ella. Miss Ella looks good now and I love Miss Ella music. But, you know, we know Miss Ella was a bit chubbier then and she used to rock her finger waves and she used to wear her dark lipstick and stuff. They had this girl in the movie that was with this ratchet ass um, cap weave. I don't know where the hell they found her from, little skinny girl, like that she had anorexia. <sighs> I was not too fond of the movie, but I was enlightened by some parts. So for that, I will give it a C. Not even a C plus, C minus, it's a C, basic C. But overall, the, 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 the cast and everything else, and the, tra the transition from parts to parts of her life and some of that, I don't want to give, give it a grade. I don't want to blame anybody because, um, you know... There's a lot of people to, to, um, to, to, that was involved in this, and they felt for some reason that their that this the final product was worthy to be put on TV. Then who am I to judge them? Like they know better than I am. I'm just I'm just a viewer. They got 3.2 million viewers to view this show, this movie on Lifetime. 3.2 million it break record on Lifetime. So we were all watching. However, we were not pleased, but we were all watching. So we can at least credit the fact that we did watch. But were, were we satisfied? No. But guess it, it, at the end of the day, is we're not going to be satisfied as fans of somebody because we're always, we're always going to think that we want more. TLC did their movie. We wanted more of this, more of that. So we were never going to be satisfied. But at least we saw something. I, but I thought that for the first movie of Aaliyah depicting life of her during the time that she was alive would be like an epic movie. Like it should be like, you know, really good and like, oh my God. Anybody want to do another third or second movie after that would have been fine and it was not up to par. I, we wouldn't care. But for the first time we seen a big movie of her on TV, we wanted it to be a huge, big, grand, all of that at the same time. Anyway, I'm not going to spend any more time on Miss Elliot, the biopic, Princess, Princess of R&B. I'm going to keep it moving. Because you know my favorite girls were on TV last night. The Real House of Atlanta, they came out last night. Yes, God. They came out last night and they delivered. They delivered last night. I'm not telling you no lie. They gave me all I want and more. Okay. <coughs> yes. Anyway, the, the girls were on TV last night. Eighteen Housewife, you know. Um, I have some little complaints about last episode. We're we're on episode two, right? Episode two of season seven. Let me just make sure. It's called No More Apologies. Let me just break it down for y'all because I have some little opinion about some parts. 
Candy Burris, you spoiled your mother so bad that she feel... No, what, what, what I want to use? She feels some type of entitlement, the fact that, yes, that's your mother. Yes, we all should make sure our mothers are our parents, period, or family. Once we're in a position, we're financially able to do it. Why not take care of your parents? Why not take care of your family members? But your mother is so spoiled that <coughs> you don't even realize it. Like, tonight, you are you're taking her to look at a new house. She didn't like the house that you gave her. She didn't move into it. Now she want a new house. Now you want to guide her a new house. First of all, the house has seven bedrooms, four bathrooms, a pool, basketball court, all this stuff. Like, this lady is at least 60 years old. What the hell does she need that basketball court to do and all that stuff for? She'll have one granddaughter and, 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 and you know, Todd, you know, the um, daughter too. What the hell she need all this space for? A lady of that age don't need seven bedrooms, Candy. She don't need seven bedrooms, or she don't need four bathrooms. Maybe she needs like a three bedroom house with two and a half bathroom, you know, two two car car garage, a pool in the back, jacuzzi, whatever. But you gave, you are giving all of this to her. I know you can afford it, Candy. We know you've done very well for yourself. But I'm thinking you're doing too much, as far as like over spoiling your mother. I don't, I don't have a problem with you giving your mother, and supporting her and making sure she's happy because obviously they are the ones who made us present here in the world. And, you know, they went through a lot of struggles to make sure that we got everything that we needed. So make sure they're happy while they're alive here still and enjoy the fruits of your labors. I'm fine with that, Candy. But when you're doing all that stuff for somebody who is not like... Anyway, y'all see the episode so y'all can judge for y'all But that was my part and take with that part of the, of the show tonight. Um... I don't want to fast forward for it to, um, to Cynthia. Do I talk about, okay, let me fast forward because I want to I, I get to that part with um, the Cynthia Bailey, um, you know, party that she had tonight. Oh, my girl Nini. I forgot about that. Nini finally um, was on Circus Soleil, you know, it, it was very raunchy. I'm like, myself was like clutching my pearls. Nini did really good. Based on what I'm seeing, they showed on the the, um, the clips that we saw of this and tonight. I was very pleased with her but Oh, sorry, God, the cocktail was getting me together. I'm, we are, I'm very pleased with her performance. She was giving me, you know, show woman. She was giving me Ron. She was giving me Madame, you know, you know. Nina, you did a thing tonight. I like the fact that, you know, you embodied what your character should have been for that um, Cirque du Soleil thing that you were being mas master or mistress of ceremony. So I do like the fact that you really um, embodied that, you know, I like seeing you um, to own it. So uh, moving along, um, who else? Oh, Kenya Moore friend that one that had got um, jumped by you know Apollo and um, Todd. He came back from I don't know where he went. Brandon, I think his name is. And man, Kenya over there making up new song again. Don't it don't shock me. It will not shock me if Kenya was gonna put another single out um, with this boy. Um, some other ratchet ass t ratchet song. So listen, listen out for that. Maybe coming up. You know, I don't know. But she and the boy Brandon that is, her, is I think is her best friend, Bruce Judy. Was making up some some cook, some 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 kitchen song that possible to hear on iTunes, you know, cause you know she likes coins, um, so she might put this on an iTunes to get some money. Um, okay, let me get to the, the, the part the part that I really want to get to. So tonight, um, also we learned that um, Cynthia, you know, has um, got a nice spread in Ebony Magazine. You know, Ebony Magazine was one of the leading African American magazines out there in um, in the country. Does <coughs> does very well, and um, Cynthia got a, like a five page spread in the magazine. She looks really good, Cynthia. You look really good in the magazine, and she, you know obviously everything costs a celebration. So Peter decided to throw her um, like a I don't know what you call it, kind of, some kind of party at Bar One. Everybody was invited except Nini and Portia, and we know why they weren't invited. So I won't go into that. But everybody was there. Candy and her husband, Apollo showed up. Um, this is today we met Miss Claudia Jordan for the first time on the show, that is. She came with Kenamore in all white. Well, Kenamore was wearing all white with a camel toe. Um, Claudia was wearing something floral. Candy was wearing all black. Um, Fenja didn't come. I guess, you know, she's dealing with, you know, obviously bigger issues. Um, so everybody was there. Everybody was there. You know, Cynthia came in looking gorge. Cynthia, that white pen, that white jacket pencil they were in tonight, what, what, black and white pencil they were in tonight, girl, was everything and more. She was giving me 
nice boob cleavage and it was sitting properly the hair was giving me nice tame down down ras and the makeup the face was beat Cynthia you look really good tonight her 47 the magazine spread was doing good and then seeing you appearing at the party flawless cute loved it um so anyway Cynthia was breaking down you know who was invited who was invited and why they weren't invited so um while they were there, people started arriving, you know, you know myself or Kenya Moore eventually came and she came with Claudia. So when they came after they hugged and got, you know, Kiki, whatever, it was like, how was this stuff going on with you and Portia? She said that um, she, she didn't want to talk about it, obviously, based on her reaction, I said that she didn't want to talk about it. However, she said that um, she did not press charge on Portia. She basically called the police and when she called the police, they came and for the reason of the assault, um, is now the state against Portia Williams. So I mean, uh, Portia Williams, yes. So, can divorce her opinion about what she thought happened, and that you know she wouldn't have called the police. Obviously, Kenny Moore has difference of opinion with that because obviously she, she was the one who was attacked, and she felt that she wanted to call the police to make more make it more dramatic. So we'll see how that plays out eventually. If anything is gonna be brought against Portia for assaulting aka assaulting um you know Kenya Moore so let's see how that so let's see how that plays out so um Claudia was just there being a fly on the wall she was there listening and chiming in here and there but she was not saying much um Apollo came and changed the dynamics of the night while Apollo walked in the room was looking very dapper like you know he always comes through looking clean and fresh and you know everybody got there in their own not everybody Kenny got in her feelings and first number way she excused herself and went to the bathroom with Claudia and said like she's Miss um, Fabulous.com anyway after all of the debacle Apollo she, she said she felt uncomfortable, uncomfortable that she wanted to leave because she didn't want to be around Apollo and they started making fun of the fact that Apollo's going to jail and she didn't want to be around a criminal or whatever so she wanted to leave. She, she tells Cynthia and Candy she was leaving. She was actually walking outside, but actually when she was walking outside, Apollo came out there to talk to her. And Cynthia was out there. So he said to um, Apollo, sorry, Apollo said to her, um, Kenya Moore, that he wants to be the bigger person and apologize. But he was not being specific what was he apologizing for. So Kenya did not really want to accept his apology. So she was like, what are you apologizing for? I don't want no half as apology. If you apologize to me, I want to know what you're apologizing for. Just don't say I'm sorry for, you know, making your life a mess or making your, you know, brought in shame, you know, whatever. So she was not buying it. She didn't want a half as apology. He was like, whatever, girl, I'm over it. Take it or leave it. I'm off. Went back in there and um, sent them back in there and told everybody else that Apollo seemed like he apologized for telling a lie on Kenya, saying that Kenya gave him his head. So, everybody was gagging, like, Apollo, why would you tell us a lie for the last two to three years that Kenya Moore, when she saw you in LA, and she didn't actually see you in LA, she didn't see you at all, that you gave her a head. Apollo got to apologize to Kenya, saying that he really didn't really mean it that way. It was how everything was going on about the fact that she started saying that he was texting um, him and said like he, she was acting like he wanted her. It was all this mess that he was talking about. And I'm like, oh my God, Apollo's giving us all this tea tonight. But I'm like, you're spilling this tea on your own self. You're going to burn your leg off with this tea because, yeah, you put your own foot in your mouth. Like you did this for the two to three years because of what? I'm sure Fedra didn't put you up to it because she don't even know herself that you actually was lying to her that you saw Kenya in LA. She wanted to suck you off or have sexual relations. There was nothing like that. And all this time, everybody is just having Kenya more off and don't want to like her because of the fact that she's a home wrecker and she's trying, trying to holler at a married man and she's a whore or whatever. So, yes, Kenya had the right to be mad, but I don't know how Phaedra's going to be when she hear that next week because Portia and Phaedra is going to be told by Candy next week episode that Apollo apologized to Portia for so-called telling a lie on her about you know the head situation so let's see how that plays out next week more mess what's what's going on this week next week Cynthia and and Portia's meeting up also because you know Cynthia said that you know where well, she saw the episode with um, Portia when she went and um, watched what happens live and, and talk about um, how Portia sorry how um, sorry Portia said 
Cynthia like flip flops and you know doesn't really know where she wants, what she wants, whatever. So I guess Cynthia got offended and she doesn't really care for Portia right now. So she and Portia gonna hash, hash that next week on next next episode. And what else we gonna see next week? Oh, can sorry um. Portia and Nini sitting down chit chatting and catching up, I guess, about what's been going on. And Portia let um Nini know that I guess Claudia is joining the show or whatever. So more mess next week. But the big mess tonight was Apollo apologizing to Kenya for ruining her life, I guess, if you want to say, or making a, a big old debacle on the show that they had a relation. Oh, they didn't say they had a relation. I guess he was implying that Kenya was trying to holler at him for oral sex. And that made Kenya be the home record whore, you know, wannabe side bitch, whatever. So he apologized. Now, I don't know if I, how I want to feel about the fact that he did all of this for the last two years for no reason. I'm like, what was your reason for doing this, Apollo? I don't know what were your reason for doing it, but you said you want to come clean, you want to clean the sleigh, you want to make sure you clear your head before you go to jail. So I guess that's, you know, what you want to do. If you clear the air, you know, you feel good, you feel free now. Glad, glad, if you're happy, I'm happy. So at the end of the day is, Apollo apologized. Kenya, I think, accepted it. She's kind of relieved. But let's see how everything plays out because at this point, um, at this point, I don't know what to say about what's going to happen with Phaedra and Apollo because you know, like, Apollo's even going to um, divorce, from a divorce attorney next week also to, to file divorce. Make sure you keep it locked here at the Rest of Boy TV and check my vlogs Every time you get, um, every time you subscribe, you get a new video email to your email address. So you, I, I urge you all to keep on subscribing, and please also comment, sound off. Let me know what, 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 what you thought about the Aaliyah movie. Then let me know what you thought about the Ancient Housewife um, episode two. Please comment or tweet me live at the Real Rasta Boy. Also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at the same name, the Real Rasta Boy. Also make sure you check out my blog, the Real Rasta Boy. Dot blogspot. Dot com.